But I'm glad I did, and I'm so, after a very hard fought contest, uh, I won the primary, and the years have, have gone on very rapidly for me. I started off as a devout opponent to the seniority system. I now am one of its leading advocates <laughs> as a result of becoming the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Now, I uh, come here with uh, some very extemporaneous remarks, totally, not totally, but disregarding uh, the great work of uh, attorney Michael Darner. He came from Washington to be here. I flew in from Detroit. And uh, I want you to just get to know him because if any of you come to my office, he'll probably be the one that you see before me. Stand up for just a minute. Attorney Michael Darner from Washington, D.C. He's the legislative counsel uh, in my congressional office. And then I have the Judiciary Committee where I have quite a few lawyers and specialists and uh, they work on all the, the great jurisdiction of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to stay too much with the script here because I just want to get to know you. I, I want to I want to be invited back. Uh, this, this is a state to me that uh, has great promise and I wanted to just tell you that by having your member Joseph Courtney on the Education and Labor Committee and the Armed Services Committee, you are getting a person who's working in uh, two of the outside of Judiciary Committee, two of the most important committees in the Congress. And so you, uh, you want to listen carefully, especially about uh, his ideas on reforming the education system and making education more affordable, which it is not now. That's the first thing going off. Uh, I know that the uh, superintendent of education could, has got a list of uh, reductions and curtailments, and uh, I, I, I just got an email from uh, the, the jazz musicians in my city. The uh, music and the art system, no. completely out of the, 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 uh, the Detroit public school system. Uh, a, a real threat, and there are probably other cuts to come. Now, what I want to do is go back to a, an old phrase that I heard a long time ago, uh, everything is everything. Uh, you see, all these things are connected up, at least from my point of view. And that's why I uh, come out uh, against the war, not just because of my philosophy with Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and I'm the only member of Congress that he ever endorsed. Uh, uh, and he uh, went to uh, uh, India uh, with his wife, the late Coretta Scott King, uh, to study nonviolence protest. And when he came back, uh, he made that announcement, and uh, the civil rights leaders of that day called him in and said, We heard what you're thinking about, Martin. He was still in his late 20s. And they said, Please don't do this. Uh, this is not going to, this is not going to work. And uh, he insisted that, uh, that you, could, you could stand for peace and oppose settling issues by war, which is what our history is almost all about, unfortunately. 
domestic and international. And he, he believed that, that through nonviolence, uh, that we could, we could come together and that we could discuss all our differences. Not just shout each other down or turn our differences of points of view into uh, hostility uh, or personal animus, but to actually try to figure out which direction we're going. Uh, president Obama has done this like no other president that I've ever served under, which is from Lyndon Johnson forward. And uh, it's just amazing how unsuccessful he's been at trying to temper the partisanship uh, that rages in the Congress. And uh, I'm here tonight to tell you that uh, one of the reasons uh, we're having to cut back so much is not only because of the uh, fiscal recklessness on Wall Street that created the subprime mortgage meltdown and, and then it was uh, repackaged, bundled, and these derivatives sent through not only our system but all the financial systems in the world and it started from taking advantage of uh, first-time homeowners who got involved into mortgage contracts in which after a little while the interest rates kicked up or there were balloon payments and then th they started trying to refinance them and we now have nearly two million homes in foreclosure and the end is not in sight. It is an incredible thing uh, and it, it's a uh, something that is tied into the fact that we were unable to regulate the financial markets. Banking and investing got confused. We repealed the Glass-Steagall Act, uh, which I admit now was a big mistake. Uh, but it sounded so progressive, in, uh, you know, 30, 20 something years ago when that happened. And so what we're trying to do now is for just a few minutes here, spread out on the table uh, the challenges that we have in our financial markets, in our uh, court system, uh, in our creation of jobs and how we deal with health care. And so I would be delighted to communicate with anybody in person by phone, email, blog, Facebook. We, there, there's so many. Uh, you, if you want to Twitter, we can do that too. <laughs> Uh, there are there's so many ways that we, we can and must begin to continue to build up this dialogue. Uh, I say that we start with uh, the jobs issue, but we can't get to that before we straighten out health care, which at the rate that it's going will bust the government. That's the, there's a lot of complicated ways to uh, get to that point, but we have to change the system. 